and welcome to the migration tool uh, from Sitefinity to Experience by Kentco uh, instructional video. My name is Nate Chadwick. I'm a solution lead going to walk you through um, the overall kind of background of it uh, and some of the configuration as well. Um, we're going to talk about the challenges because uh, there are a few challenges from going from Sitefinity to XYK. Uh, they're very similar in a lot of ways, but there are a few things that we had to kind of set up configuration in, in order to move that over. Um, and we'll talk about how we solved those challenges. And then we'll go a quick overview of the migration tool, um, how it works, some of the methods that are available to you to move and migrate some of the some of the objects, as well as the installation in GitHub. And then from there, we'll actually start diving into the configuration. So we'll start with Sitefinity. There's a few things that you have to configure inside of there, a few things that you have to configure in your X by K instance. And then the major configuration is in the actual migration tool. So we'll go over that. We'll also talk about how to extend your code because there are a few options uh, that'll allow you to extend your uh, import services, your adapters, the field types in case you have like a custom field type that has to process a certain way. We'll go through all that. And then finally, we'll we'll run the tool and actually see the migration happen. There's three major uh, challenges going from Sitefinity to X by K. Uh, first being the pages and content items, then the type definitions and field types, and finally, the related content and images. Objects like users, media files, media libraries have very similar concepts from Sitefinity to X by K. So those were able to move a bit more seamlessly. Uh, still requires, you know, of course, the import process, but not as much processing in the background. OK, so the challenges with uh, pages and content items. Bit of background on Sitefinity. So in Sitefinity, the pages are actually the exact same content type for all pages. So this doesn't allow you to have structured content at the page level. Um, really, the pages are, are strictly for building, you know, like we would in X by K with the uh, page builder. You use a widget builder, you can build out the structure of the page. Content items, those are your uh, structured content types, uh, similar to content items in the content item hub in X by K. Uh, it allows you to create um, items, have that structured content, um, and even configure them as well. You can add field types, you can do HTML, text, check boxes, all that stuff um, you can do inside of the content items. The biggest difference between X by K and Sitefinity though, is that the content items are separated from the pages. There is no way to view a content item unless you add a content item uh, out of the box widget. We'll talk about that here. So there's a listing out of the box widget uh, that allows you to list a content item. So you can select a particular type, let's say news, for example, that will then list on the page. Uh, when those list, it takes all of those content items URL names and appends it to the page that you're on. So if we have for example, a page with um, the URL slash news, when you put the listing widget on that page and click any of the child objects that are being listed, it'll append it. So then let's say we click on item one, that'll be slash news slash item one. The detail portion actually replaces the listing view uh, in a dynamically rendered page. So it'll take that listing widget and show a detail view and show all of the uh, structured content for it. So if you go to slash new slash item one, it would now be a detail view with your structured content being built on the page. The and details may include a listing as well, which then will allow you to go even a step further down um, the tree. So our solution, uh, we are going to use configuration in the app settings to essentially allow you to set up a listing 
and what the URL is for that listing, what the type is supposed to be for that listing. So the migration tool will automatically create the child pages uh, underneath that particular listing page. You can also set up a detail. This allows you to have a specific detail page where you may want to have children pages underneath that detail page, but that particular detail page would then have your structured content. Um, the migration tool also handles the hierarchy of types automatically. So for instance, um, the out of the box blog content type has a child called blog post. And those blog posts, if you created a detail for the blog, those blog posts would automatically be a child of that particular blog item. Next up is the type definitions and field types. Uh, much like Kinsco, there is this idea of uh, a content type. So they have special fields in there. It'll be a checkbox, text box, whatever you need. And so really, we need to bring those over to the XYK site as well. In Sitefinity, though, there is this idea of static or out of the box types. Those are actually inside of the code. Uh, so they're not part of the database themselves. And we created some uh, JSON files to handle those. And then also the dynamic module types, which are your custom content types and content items uh, that are being pulled over in uh, XYK. The other part is the actual field type configuration. Sifinity handles it a little bit different. It's similar in the sense of how the database uh, types, you know, column types are set up as well as the control types, but they are a little bit different. So we had to, we had to migrate those over accordingly. Okay, so our solution. So we're using the export for deployment feature inside of Sitefinity. This is very similar to the XYK uh, continuous integration that it, it creates. Um, there are actually files that include all of your type definitions. I include all the fields associated with them, all of that inside of there. And then, as I mentioned, we do have static or custom definitions that we created for the static types inside of Sitefinity. Uh, and we'll go through those. And then finally, we created something called the field type factory that allows you to um, even extend with your own custom field types. And it'll just handle whatever the type definition uh, field is using. It'll translate it over, translate that over to the X by K instance. OK, finally, our last ch challenge, the related content and images. So much like X by K, there is related selectors inside of Sitefinity. You can have uh, a selector to relate content items, relate pages or uh, media items as well. Um, but due to uh, Sitefinity's kind of complex data structure in their database on how these related content items connect to each other, uh, we had to find a solution for that. So our solution was using the REST SDK uh, package for Sitefinity. Um, Sitefinity provides this AP or provides API endpoints that return JSON, and depending on how you configure it, you can also return the related content. So very easily, we were able to uh, scrape the JSON, get those related items, and you know pull the data over however we see fit. Um, this goes back to the field type factory again, though, because in that same field type factory, as we're looping through to find the fields for that particular content item, we're using that factory to say, is this a media uh, related media field? If it is, then we need to go get the the related item and return the ID for that versus, you know, it's just a text box or something like that. So again, this is extensible, uh, so you guys can add it for your uh, custom field types as well. So part of it is uh, languages and channels. We needed to pull those over in order to do content and other stuff like that. So in, uh, languages and channels are the first. And in order to import those, you have the start import channels method that allows you to pull over just those. So if that's all you want to bring over, you can do that. 
Next up is content types. Same thing. Uh, the content types have a specific method for uh, importing those. Start import content types. What this does though, because content types rely on channels to be imported as well, it imports those for you. So if you do the content types, it will import the channels because we need the channels to know whether content type is, let's say a page or something like that. We need to know that so then we can connect them up. Next is users. Those are dedicated. We can just import users if we want to in the start import users method. Media libraries and media files. Again, media files require media libraries to be imported. So those are just a given. To import those though, you use the start import media method and users are required for those media files for, um, you know, created by or last modified by that sort of thing. So the users will be pulled in if you do the import for the media. And finally, web pages and the content items themselves. Those require everything to be imported. So just running the start import content uh, method will import everything, languages, channels, content types, users, media files and media libraries um, to get all of those pulled over. OK, now on to the installation. So there are two options uh, you can either grab from the releases inside of GitHub, or you can just clone the entire repository if you need to make any modifications, of course, um, that sort of thing. Now on to uh, talking about the configuration. So configuration for Sitefinity. There are a few things that we have to set up in order to, for the migration tool to work properly. We need to ensure that the deployment mode is set to source, uh, not target. This will allow the export for deployment um, to be available. If it is set to target, that export for deployment won't even show up. Next up, we need to turn on the default web service. In most cases, there will be a default web service unless uh, the client did delete it. If they did delete it, you can create one yourself and make sure all of the uh, the actual content types are available for that web service. You'll also want to make sure that it's either completely open or you can set it up to use an API key if you would like. And finally, we have to run the export for deployment process. This will give us our deployment folder, which will have all of our type definitions, you know, our fields, all of that inside of there so that when we pull that over, we'll get all of our content types inside of X by K. Now onto the configuration for X by K. Uh, we recommend backing up your database just in case something goes wrong. You'll, you know, you'll at least have that backup that you can go back to. Uh, we also recommend backing it up after each run in case, you know, you run and something gets messed up. We don't want to lose any of that data. If it is a fresh install of X by K, you know, that's, that's, pretty safe to kind of run that. But again, we, we recommend backing up the database. And the only other configuration you have to do in X by K is actually modifying uh, the default language inside of uh, X by K. It is by default EN dash US in Sitefinity. The default English co uh, culture code is EN. So ensuring to make sure we don't, you know, add another default language or have any problems with that setting it up to just en will allow everything to uh, run smoothly and finally the migration tool we'll go more into this when we actually do the import itself uh, but just you know a couple quick key items so you want to set up your x by k and sitefinity connection strings set up the uh, actual hash salt for your X by K. That way it can process properly. You want to add your domain for the web service and I'll go more into detail with this, but it can be either the live domain or it can be a staging domain. Um, if you do have it locally, like for example, local local host or something like that. We'll also need to add our absolute path for the deployment folder that was created from our export for deployment. 
we'll need to set up a code name prefix, much like you know you already do in X by K. You'll have a code name prefix for all of your content types. Typically, it's you know the site name or something like that. We do recommend not using CMS or OM, just based on you know recommendations from Kentico. We'll also set up the configure, or we'll we'll set up the uh, page content types. That is the area where we dic dictate whether it's a listing or a detail type, and how that how that actually functions inside of the tree. I'll also talk a little bit about extending the code, what that looks like. We do have Entity Framework all in it, integrated. So if you have custom tables or something that you want to pull over, you can uh, integrate that. We have a REST SDK base class that allows you to connect things up really quickly. Um, it does ensure that the REST client is set up and running. So I would recommend using that. We'll also talk about the custom field types and what that looks like with the factory. And finally, we'll briefly talk about the import services and adapters, but that will really be dependent on whether you need to uh, import other items inside of your uh, custom instance. And on to the actual import. Simple, it's .NET run. Let's go to our Sitefinity instance first. So this is where we have to set up our configuration. Uh, as I mentioned, we have to do a couple of things in here before we can actually run the migration tool. So first and foremost, you wanna go into your settings. Then advanced. and scroll down until you find packaging. Inside of here is where you set your packaging mode. So you know, make sure that this is set to source versus target. This will allow you to do that export for deployment. Something as well is after you save the changes, you may need to restart your Sitefinity instance. Uh, you know, Sometimes with the admin and that sort of thing, it doesn't show up. So you may need to restart that. Okay, after that is set the source can go back and up next is going into the actual web services itself so administration then web services and again this should be by default in sitefinity instances if it's not you can create one but if it is go ahead and jump into the default make sure that your protocol is set to o data this allows it to just read it. If you want to actually um, authenticate it or even restrict it by an API key, um, you can add those here. Easiest is everyone, especially if it's just on your local, I would recommend using everyone. You'll also want to click change and make sure that all of your content types are selected here. I typically just click here, make sure it's all selected, click done, and then save changes. You'll also want to make sure that this is actually set to true as well, just to make sure that that service is actually active. Okay, now that our default app service is set up, we can go on to our export for deployment. So that is under administration, then export slash import. Export for deployment over here on the left. And then export. This is the uh, default path. So it'll place it there. This will come in handy in our actual configuration of the migration tool. So export. And this does take a few seconds. While that's running, we can actually go find it inside of our file structure. So I'm under the uh, Sitefinity example, which is my current Sitefinity site. The deployment folder will be under app data, Sitefinity, and then deployment. This is where it gets placed. So you want to grab your actual path through this folder uh, for the migration tool. Okay, 
So that's been exported. Now we can move on to our Experience by Kentico site. So here I have a base, you know, new installation set up here. Um, I don't have any channels. I don't have anything in the content hub. I also don't have anything in the media libraries. No users other than uh, the global admin. And of course, no channels as well, so no pages. Uh, the other thing too is actually the content types. This is all empty. Okay, so the actual configuration that we have to do in here is inside of languages. This is the default English language. All we need to do is update this to just EN. That will ensure that Sitefinity's default English culture of EN will just connect up to this this default culture here. So we'll save. And that concludes uh, our configuration there. Okay, so we'll jump over into our migration tool here. So I have this pulled down. Um, we'll just go through the app settings here real quick and talk through um, each item as well as especially talk through the page content types and how that relates back to the Sitefinity site. So first things first, we wanna have our CMS connection string in there. Uh, this is just a simple connection string to my X by K site. Next, our Sitefinity connection string. Again, just the connection string to my local DB for the Sitefinity site. We'll wanna set our domain. So in this case, my Sitefinity instance is running under localhost if you're not sure which or what the domain is for your site you can go to manage sites here and depending on what you set as the domain uh, that particular site's pages will be imported um, due to how the import process works every channel is imported but unless the domain is set, uh, those particular pages for that channel won't be imported um, until it's actually set. So in this case, if we go to Quantum International here, I did set up the uh, the checkbox to process of you know development for this site. So this is where I set my local host. You can set it or grab this, but of course, if it's running locally and you don't have that, a particular domain working for your local environment, um, you can just place this here. Okay, so jumping back over here. So that's our domain there. The default uh, app or API web service path is just API default. If you're using different uh, web service, you wanna make sure that you get this updated. Um, but again, this is just the out of the box web service path. You also have the option of putting an API key, as mentioned in, in the configuration of the web service. You can add that if you would like, but it's not you know, necessary if, if you just have it open to everyone. Next is our module deployment folder path. So this is the absolute path to that deployment folder that was created by the export for deployment process. Um, just make sure that that gets added there. We also have our code name prefix. In this case, I'm using Quantum with the Sitefinity example site. It could be whatever your site uh, code name needs to be. Next up is our page content types. So this is a JSON array. You can add as many uh, JSON objects as you would like. And there's a few key areas here. So the type name is the name of your uh, content type inside of Sitefinity. So this will say, okay, event isn't a content type that needs to go in the content item hub. It needs to be an actual page. So it'll make sure that it creates, creates it as a pages content type versus a reusable content type. Next is the page root path. This is where the actual listing is for those events. Uh, so in the example site, it's under company slash events. And then this also tells the system that this is a listing page. So these event 
items need to be placed as children to this events page. As you can see, we have a couple of other ones here. So blog posts, those will be placed underneath blog, the as a listing, and then news item, that'll be placed under news as well. Um, you can, of course, create more. And we can even set this up as, let's say, type name, event. And we can add some more here too. So if we wanted an actual detail item, we would set this as detail. And as a detail, what it does is it goes and finds the content item based on this URL. If your URL doesn't match this, you can add item URL name and set this to a particular URL. So if we had an event called event dash one, it will go find the event dash one URL name, connect it up to your actual uh, detail page and show that event as structured content for that page versus it just being a regular page, you know, a simple uh, page from Sitefinity, you'll have your structured content on that particular uh, path. To get these actual definitions on where you need to place things, you will have to look around the actual Sitefinity site. So let's jump back over to our Sitefinity site real quick. So inside of pages, you can have pages where that uh, listing or detail widget has been added. So in this case, I know that news has this particular listing widget, but you will have to go look around, find all your listing widgets or detail widgets that are being used and you know set up that configuration. So in this case, on our news page, there is this news widget here. Uh, the biggest indicator on whether it's a listing or detail is it has this content list settings and single item settings uh, set up here. So in this case, because the content is set to all published news, we know that this particular page is a listing page for your news content items. So in that case, we can go into the configuration set up news item and set up inside quantum slash news as the URL for this listing. If you're not sure where to get this URL, you can go into the uh, three dots over here and then title and properties. This will provide you the URL inside quantum dash news. So you want to grab that and put it inside of your configuration here. Same thing for these other two. These particular pages have an event listing or a blog post listing that shows all the blog posts on that page. So adding these just allows to have that configuration putting it into X by K. Finally, we have our web application uh, physical path here, which is just your absolute path to your X by K website. So in this case, mine is underneath dev X by K for my test site. So now that all of our configuration is set up, we can of course make sure that everything is in place. Again, I would make sure that your backpack or your backup for your X by K site is set up. Make sure all of the configuration is set up across the board. Um, ensure that that deployment folder is also there. Make sure your content, your dynamic module content types are inside of here. All of that, just check across the board, make sure that it's all good to go before you actually run it. So to run the import process, you want to go into the examples and then console. 
and run.net run. The system will do a couple of initializations of making sure that the REST SDK is available um, before it actually starts calling and bringing everything over. And it goes relatively quick considering the amount of data that is being pulled over, um, media files, users, pages, content items, all of that is being pulled over. So in this case, I am using, if we jump over to our program here, I am using the start import content. As I mentioned before, there is several other methods uh, to this actual, uh, let's see, to our import service, which is the I Sitefinity import service. Um, so grabbing that, you have the available methods that I mentioned, and it'll pull it over. Uh, so that quickly, it's already done. We have all of our content items being pulled in, um, as well as our web page URLs. That's all being pulled in. So now if we jump over to our X by K project, I do recommend actually real quick to shut off your site and reload it um, just in case anything is cached. It, you may run into issues saying it can't find the content type or data class, you know, that sort of thing. It's most likely due to uh, cache. So in this case, I am going to go restart my X by K project. Okay, now that it is restarted, we can go into the admin and check. As you'll you know, first see, you'll see the channels that were being added. Um, but real quick, we'll, we'll go check other things. So languages, other languages were added based on the uh, the languages set up for these sites in Sitefinity. You'll find that the channels were added, the content types were added, especially those content types that we specified inside of the configuration itself. So blog post events and news were all set as pages while everything else was set as reusable content. There is a, a content type called page node. This is using site or this is for site finities, just regular pages. So, you know, that gets added by default as a page. Next is our users. So all of the users uh, that were inside of our Sitefinity instance got pulled over and are active and set. We'll jump into our media libraries. So all of the media libraries or in, in just Sitefinity, they're just considered libraries, um, got pulled over and all of the files in those as well. So if we look at testimonials, for example, our files are inside of there. Some other ones we can jump through here. It does handle if you're using a blob storage inside of Sitefinity, it does handle that as well. It'll go and grab and place them. Now, of course, if you don't have it set up in X by K as a blob storage, um, it won't be in blob, but it, it does handle grabbing from a blob storage or your local files. Okay, now that our media libraries are there, we'll also check our content hub. So inside of here, these are all your reusable items that got pulled over um, where we didn't specify the actual uh, page content type inside of here. So in this case, list, blog, all of that is inside of here, um, including testimonials slide. And if we jump into here, you'll see that we have, you know, all of the connected portions here, as well as uh, if we go, let's say, let's go to our blog. Let's go to list item. So in this case, list item does have a content uh, field that is an HTML field. So that gets added as uh, our rich text inside of X by K. Um, all of that's being pulled over. 
There's also, of course, our language variants. So if we go to different languages, we'll see those as well, depending if they are translated. Um, it does pull those in uh, as well. OK, now let's jump over to our channel. So we uh, pulled in Quantum International. Uh, if we actually go over to our Sitefinity instance, you'll see that all the pages that got pulled over uh, got pulled into X by K as well as their hierarchy. So home page, landing pages, all of these folders uh, with particular pages, those got pulled into our X by K instance, um, as well as, you know, the hierarchy that builds those. Where this connects to our configuration here with our page content types, in this case, if we go look inside of Inside Quantum Blog or Inside Quantum News, we should go find those pages that were created as child pages. So if we go into Inside Quantum, Inside News, these are the actual content items from inside of Sitefinity that got pulled over. So in this case, you then have your structured content for that news item um, right inside of here. You can get, of course, get it all connected up once you add the code and rendering of these pages, um, you at least have your your structured content here for the URL uh, that's being added. So those are being handled. Um, we also have our blog. These these pages as well, I'll mention. So these are from Sitefinity. These are the detail view of those pages. So those are something that you can delete or, you know, handle some some other way. But those are uh, being pulled, of course, because they're pages. Also check underneath uh, company and then events. So our events got pulled over as well. Okay, so that concludes the actual uh, import, what it looks like inside of X by K. And from there, we can actually start digging into a little bit of the code, um, talking about some of those extensible items, what you can do there. Um, but again, it it imports relatively quick, connects everything up relatively quick, and uh, you can go from there of, of what you need to do with your site. Uh, it will allow you, if you run it again, it'll modify anything. So just fair warning, if you go and modify one of these fields, run the import again, it will modify whatever is set inside of Sitefinity will come over as that particular value. Um, so just be mindful of that if you do run it again, again, using that those backups to make sure that you don't inadvertently uh, lose anything. Okay, so let's jump over to the code real quick because there are a few uh, key areas that we can talk about um, when you pull this down. So inside of Sitefinity data, this this is where all of the providers are, uh, your REST SDK base, your um, NED framework connection, all of that is inside of here. So if you would like, you can use the REST SDK uh, abstraction. Again, this makes sure when it gets loaded up, it'll make sure that that REST client is initialized um, and it'll even throw an error if it runs into any issues. So I'd recommend this if you're connecting up any other uh, API endpoints that use the REST, the uh, Sitefinity REST API endpoints. There's also this Sitefinity context. Uh, which is using NED framework. So if you wanted to, you could, of course, add your own properties that transfer a particular uh, database table. So in this case, for example, we have user, which grabs the Sitefinity users uh, table, and we're using that for processing the users and that sort of thing. So if you had custom tables, you could add them inside of here um, and actually pull those over as well inside of your import service and adapters. Okay. Next up inside of our Sitefinity project, um, there is a couple of important areas and that, and, and one of them is the field types. So this is the actual field types that allow 
when it's processing to know, okay, it's a text box, it's an HTML type. What does that look like when it's over inside of Kentico? as well as how does the data process when we bring it over. So a good example of this is, let's take the HTML field type. So there is an I field type uh, interface that'll ensure that all of the uh, properties need to be there, as well as there is a base in case you wanna default anything. So in this case, we are using it because this will default, for example, um, if the column type is text or if the size is based on the DB length property, that sort of thing. So this is just kind of defaults everything in case you don't need really any other processing than what's needed for your H or your particular field type. But there are a few key areas here. So this Sifinity widget type name, this is the type name inside of your uh, type definition. So it'll show you know widget name that sort of thing that's what you want to pull over so if you have a custom widget type for for a particular field you want to create one set the widget type here and it'll then know that okay this is this class needs to be used for that particular field type uh, you can of course set the column type text boolean long text whatever uh, is needed in in the x by k database as well as you can set up your settings. So in this case, we're setting the control name to the Kentico administration rich text editor. This tells X by K, hey, this is a rich text field. It needs to be a rich text editor. So with this field type base, there is also this idea of get data. So this gets from that SDK item, it'll just get the data that's whatever set. So by default, it's just string. That's most of the time, right? We got text boxes, um, HTML, text areas, that sort of thing. So you can just have that as string by default. Um, there are a few instances, like let's take the short, or I'm sorry, the choice field type, for instance, where we're returning bool. So we wanna override that and actually return a Boolean. That way, when it gets over to um, the X by K project, it'll say, whether it's checked or not, that sort of thing. There's a few instances where it's a little bit more complicated. For example, the media type. So this is grabbing from the actual JSON that's being sent over. So it's a, it's an array of image DTO. This will allow us to then take that related data, turn it into whatever we need to inside of uh, X by K. So in this case, we need to have identifier, name, size, all of that and then serialize as JSON as we're sending it over to the X by K instance. So this allows, you know, our media, our related media field types to get all connected up or even um, our related data types. So if we have like a content item selector, that sort of thing, similar idea, it'll go grab that, it'll set the identifier and return it. So if you had a custom field type, you can add this, you can have however the data needs to be processed, sent over to X by K for your custom uh, control inside of X by K as well. So there'll be, you know, you'll have your custom control inside Finity and a custom control in X by K to actually process what, what it needs to be. But this allows you to kind of set all that up if you need to. Okay, so next is our services. So these are the different uh, services inside of everything that runs, you know, channels, languages, content, that sort of thing. If you needed to create your own, you could. Um, there is a, if we, if we jump into here, there is an interface for these. Um, some require dependencies and that just ensures that, okay, for, for content, like I was mentioning, we need to have users, we need to have channels, all of that needs to be done. So then we're ensuring that, you know, those content dependencies are being set before we actually run the import service itself. Um, so when you, when you use that interface, you get a couple of methods, uh, which then, you know, passes in the dependencies. If you don't have those, then it won't pass them in. It'll just be a simple get, um, and then you can process. There's also adapters, uh, which allow you to 
you know, adapt your Sitefinity model into your IUMT model because this is using the universal migration tool uh, to pull that over. So it'll, uh, you know, you'll create adapters for that. So in this case, you know, we're going from page, it has some dependencies and we're going to content item simplified model. So with that adapter, you can then adapt them, return your content item simplified model that you need and, you know, go from there. We'll jump into a really simple one, like the user, for example, where it's actually taking our user uh, item from our data and then returning our user info model, um, kind of getting all of that set up. So then very simply, it'll go through every single item that is being returned, adapt them to what they need to be and send them over uh, to the import service. So if you had any custom things, you'd have to create, you know, an import service for those custom things as well as the adapters, however that goes, uh, getting it over to Kentco um, or uh, XYK, but you'll get that all, you can get that all set up inside of those. And that concludes our importing. So from there, uh, if you have any questions, of course, contact uh, Kentco. Good luck importing. Thank you.